Hello y'all and welcome to Young Folk Knits. Today I have a lot of projects to share. Young Folk Knits. My name is Casey and on this channel I mainly like to share all about my love for fiber arts. So lots and lots of knitting. Sometimes there is sewing, spinning, crochet, and whatever else I am into at the moment. I also like to share a little bit about living on a small farm here in Arkansas where my husband, myself, and our children are beekeepers. We love raising gardens and animals and spending time outdoors here in the foothills of the Ozarks. So if any of that sounds like your cup of tea, then make sure and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on any new video content. So today is a very rainy Saturday. I think it's October the 28th or it's somewhere around there. I do know the day of the week is Saturday. So that's winning for me. So it has almost been a week since we have been home from Rhinebeck and honestly, I am still recovering <laughs> in a good way. I had the most awesome time at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. It was so much fun. Uh, just a very fast paced and a bit exhausting of a long weekend there. We actually left our house on a Wednesday night because we needed to stay overnight near the airport and so we were gone for four days five nights I guess anyway still recuperating a little bit <laughs> from the fabulous weekend in New York and I really have not done much knitting whatsoever but right before we left I went into a little bit of a frenzy I cast on so many things. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, nothing seemed to be exactly what I wanted for my outfits to wear at Rhinebeck because I was super excited to, you know, wear some sewing, wear some knitting, all of that stuff. And in the end, I didn't wear any sewn items at all. <laughs> and pretty much just wore shawls that I could easily take off because I get hot so easy. If I ever go again, I will plan more accordingly. I think instead of wearing a rain jacket like I did, I wore a rain jacket everywhere. I might try to pull from my inner RO <laughs> from RO Knits and Pearls and take a really fun umbrella instead. And that way I can wear a sweater every day. But with that being said, I did get up to a lot of stuff before I left for Ron Beck. I sewed an entire jumpsuit I knit a vest, which I have, you know, finished over here. I'm going to show you in a minute. I have quite a few other projects that are coming together and I am excited to share more about that. So since it is a very cozy kind of Saturday, I thought I would jump on here and just show you a little bit of what I'm working on and a few things that I want to do this week. And then I'll probably jump back on and let you know how everything's going a little bit later in the week. So the Rhinebeck Caravan Cal is over. It was so much fun. Prizes are being shipped out. And there's a couple of you, you, you know who you are, that are still waiting on a giveaway package from me <laughs> from previously. And just know that that is being sent as well. And I'm putting a, a little bit of extras in there because of my unacceptable tardiness. Anyway, I have been working through a lot of admin, which I have woefully neglected this past week. I've had a lot of things that I needed to catch up on. It's been a crazy summer and I have had so many emails and 
messages that were waiting patiently to be responded to. I'm still not through them all. I absolutely love the creative side of Young Folk Knits, but I'm not very good at the admin side, but I am continuing to work on that. Also, something that's making me incredibly happy is the fact that when we came home from Rhinebeck, all of the trees here have turned into the most beautiful colors. We're finally getting some fall colors. Yesterday, the temperature was like 82 degrees, but it wasn't a summery, humid 82 degrees. It was a breezy, dry 82 degrees, which is a lot more comfortable than, you know, the Arkansas 100% humidity where it might be 82, but it feels like 110. <laughs> Is that an exaggeration? I don't know. Probably not. I'm getting all the fall vibes right now. It makes me feel like knitting again. It makes me so happy. I'm loving it. And I will have to show you all the beautiful colors later. First things first, let's look at some finished objects. Okay. So, because I'm a crazy person, literally four days before we were leaving for Rhinebeck, I decided I didn't like any of my clothes, and I had sewn a hinterland in linen from Merchant and Mills Fiber. It's a gingham, I want to say maybe Joseph, I can't remember the exact name, but it's a very identifiable pattern print on the linen. And I had sewn a hinterland dress from So Liberated. I did not do a button placket. I did three, four sleeves. And otherwise, I just sewed it according to pattern. Except one thing I did do, I just remembered, is make it a little bit longer. Because I feel like I'm really tall. I'm 5'8". Not like, you know, super model tall or anything like that. But most patterns are written either in knitwear or in sewing to usually be for a person that's five six. I think five four to five six is five six. Five four to five six is usually what's considered average. So I've noticed that most of those patterns it actually says, you know, this is written for someone who is five six. And so I always need to add like two inches to my skirt. <laughs> um, just to make it hit me at the same point that it would hit the average person which is the great thing about making your own clothes. You can make it hit you wherever you want. So I did do that and sometimes I need to lengthen my bodice. This time I don't think I did though and it all worked out okay. So I had made that dress and I had completely forgot about it because I actually made it to wear to run back and then I folded it up and put it away and it went completely out of my mind. So I was going through my box of sweaters and sewn items and I saw it and I thought oh I also got yarn to make a Friday slipover v-neck from Petite Knit and instead of that because I thought with the all the purling that you do in that I think it's a broken rib pattern which is so yummy and delicious I love that pattern I did think that would not take me a little bit longer so I decided Instead, I would cast on the Stockholm Slipover, which is also by Petite Knit, but it is a extremely straightforward, simple um, vest slipover in stockinette. So, the reason I did that is because I kind of find that when I knit things, I need two different categories. There's Betsy. She must see a squirrel. So I have two different categories of knitted items. Basically, one is things I would wear with pants and the other is things I would wear with dresses. If it is a empire waist style dress, then I really need a cropped top to hit me at my natural waist. And that is what seems to look the best with a gathered skirt because otherwise you get this bunching of material under the bottom of the sweater where the ribbing is if it's too long and it just doesn't flow right it doesn't look right to me unless your sweater is super oversized i guess i don't have a lot of those most of mine are are pretty 
pretty fitted. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I wanted a vest that was cropped and hit me right at my natural right waist, right where my sewing patterns come in at my waist at the smallest point. And I think that that works the best because then after that, you've got all that gathered fabric from the skirt and that can be, you know, right where the vest hits at the top of that. So I decided to do the Stockholm pattern and I pulled out some yarn that I had got from La Mercerie, which was Knitting for Olive Merino and Camarose Minatsole. And I'll put the color names down in the description because I cannot remember. I know that the Knitting for Olive was dark ochre, I believe. Um, as for the Minatsol, I cannot remember. <laughs> anyway, I held one of each of those and I made a Stockholm slipover. So I made my slipover shorter than what the pattern called for. I made a size, I think I actually went up to a size six. Normally I would make a size five, but I wanted this to not be tight anywhere except my ribbing that it would kind of come in on. And I thought that that size would, would work out well. Her sizing seems to be a little bit different. For instance, her size six or even seven seems to be the same finished bust circumference of a lot of U.S. size five even. And I'm not sure if that's because she has a lot smaller uh, size range to at the other end. I'm not sure how that works out, but always check your, your measurements in the pattern because just because you would make a size five in one pattern doesn't mean you would in another. So I made the size six in this one and I just read the pattern to get my numbers to cast on. I did the back, I did the front, and then once I joined in the round, I no longer looked at the pattern. In fact, I think it might even call for two by two ribbing. And all I did was knit it to the length I wanted and then I did an inch and a half, probably inch and a half to two inches of one by one ribbing for my hem. And I just did a normal bind off in pattern. I did not even do a tubular bind off, which I almost always do. And then I just picked up at my own rate, whatever, whatever I felt like was working out as I was doing it. And I just made sure I picked up the exact same amount of stitches for both armholes. I think I picked up 112 stitches for each armhole. And I don't even know how many stitches I picked up for my neck. <laughs> but I went up a size to bind all. I went up a, a needle size or two. I actually think I did a ribbing in a US 4. And I went up to a US 6 needle to do my bind off. And that way it was plenty stretchy. I, I don't want it to be too stretchy, but I think it turned out really nicely. I have not blocked it yet and I have not even woven my ends because when I decided not to wear it, I was just like, forget it, <laughs> moving on. But I tried it on again and I love it. I think I am going to wear this all the time. This is going to be my, my dress vest. <laughs> I think it's perfect and it's the perfect length. It looks like from... I guess I could measure it. I'll measure it and put it in up here on the screen. How long it is, including the ribbing from from one to to the end. It looks like maybe it's ten inches. I don't know. I'll measure it and put it on the screen. This is what it is, including both ribbings and the hem. You know, from here to here at my at my body. Anyway, I really, really like it. I don't have a lot more to say about it, except I think it's a super fun color. You can see that there's a little bit of marling because the two colors I used were not exactly the same, but I think it just gives it a nice depth of color and I'm really happy with it. Okay, next up I have a finished object sewing, this time not knitting. And 
that is my Zadie jumpsuit. So I bought this jumpsuit pattern a few months ago, like maybe even six months ago. I can't remember, but I bought it and actually had it printed at a print shop a while back. And that is all because Mega from Skeins of Dreams sent me the pattern and was like, ooh, look at this. And I was like, yes, I'm gonna make that. <laughs> so I finally, you know, I actually had everything cut out. I had my pattern pieces cut out. And then for, for like at least a month, if not more, probably two months, I have had my fabric cut out and everything was in a pile or ready to go. <laughs> so I wasn't really happy with anything that I had for some reason. I don't know, I don't know what's wrong with me. And at like eight o'clock the night before we left for the airport, I decided I was going to sew my Zadie jumpsuit. <laughs> so everything was cut out and ready. All I had to do was the actual sewing part and it was not bad at all. I used my serger. You can see I've got inside seams surged, which that always makes me happy. Um, and I used 100% linen fabric from Merchant and Mills. And I think this is a color S-O-U-K. So, souk, maybe? I don't know. But I think that is the color. So, I did mine short sleeves. I did not add the sleeves. And that's really nice because it's kind of like a drop shoulder. The sleeves are already just part of your top pieces that you cut out. You don't actually have to sew the sleeves on if you don't do long sleeves. If you do do long sleeves, you will have to do that. But I decided not to, and it's like the perfect short sleeve length for me. I love it. And I think that it will actually look really good under a cardigan. And then you have no buttons, no zippers. Instead, this jumpsuit ties you have two ties that wrap around the waist. You have pockets. <laughs> Y'all, I am in love. This is probably my favorite thing I have ever sewn. I will be sewing this again. And it, it has a lot of leeway on which size you pick because it is a wrap. So if maybe you're a little bit off one way or the other with your sizing choice, um, you've got a lot of forgiveness because of that wrapping situation. <laughs> and I love that because my weight tends to fluctuate a lot. And I think this is gonna be a great option to make it more wearable for me no matter what is going on with my body. I'm 5'8", and I think most patterns are written for 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, this one, I think, did say that it was for that height, so I did add some. I think I could have either made it like a half an inch longer, because once I did my hem, right before I did my hem, I thought it was the perfect long length. Uh, it just almost hit the floor. Once I did my hemming on the pants, it was like half an inch shorter than what I wanted it to be. Um, otherwise, I think it would look good even a little bit shorter than that to have more of, you know, what my, my grandpa used to call high waters. <laughs> you pull them up when it's high water, about the length that, uh, that they were, you know, for crossing the creek and all that stuff. But yeah, uh, otherwise, otherwise I'm pretty happy with this. I love it. I am going to be making more. In fact, I kind of want one in every color. And the linen fabric is, it's just perfection. But I kind of want to try it out in some other fabrics as well. So I will keep you all posted on that. You definitely don't have to have a serger to make these. Your sewing machine does not even need to have a buttonhole maker, anything like that. You do need to be familiar with applying a, not a facing, um, a, a bias binding because you need to be able to do that all the way across, not even just the neck, but it goes all the way down basically to your crotch on both sides. So. You need to be pretty good with uh, applying a bias binding. 
Mine's not perfect. It looks homemade, but I am totally okay with that. I love linen and I think linen in itself is not perfect. So it, it looks good whenever you sew something yourself in it. it. It just all fits into the imperfect state of linen fabric. And I think that's great. And next up is gonna be a cardigan to go with it, I believe. <laughs> I'm very happy with how that turned out. Okay, so what am I working on? All right, y'all, I am down to two test knits. One is my Sailor cardigan, which I am testing in some yarn from Camellia Fiber Co. I love it so much. So this is actually a new color. I think, I'm not sure if she's released this yet, but she's going to be releasing it. And it's called Rosewood. And it is on her Merino Worsted. It's a organic Merino, non-superwash, and it's squishy as all get out. It's heavenly and I absolutely love it. I've got it caked up and in use over here. But this is the main color of my cardigan. So, as you may notice, the cardigan itself actually has contrast colors for the ribbing, the cuffs, and a really fun sailor neck cardigan. Ah, cardigan. Collar. And for that, I am using the color Dahlia, which is like one of her original colors. I really, really love it. I actually have it on a couple different of her bases of hers. So, this is the two colors, and it is very low contrast. I hope that you're going to be able to see the contrast well enough whenever the whole sweater is done. Y'all know me. I love me some low contrast. I just hope that this isn't too low contrast. I hope it's going to look good. Um, I mean, I don't think you can make anything with her yarn and it look bad. I love it so much, but I think that these colors look really, really nice together. So I think it's going to look, I think it's going to look good. And I think this is going to be a cardigan that I will wear a lot. I kind of want this to be my year of cardigans, <laughs> the year 2024, because lately I've just been like popping out the pullovers. A little alliteration there. Um... I have been popping out the pullovers and I love pullovers. I love knitting pullovers, but as far as wearing goes, I like wearing cardigans a little bit better. As you can see, I wear cardigans a lot <laughs> and I think I would get a little bit more use daily out of having some more cardigans in my wardrobe. I've got a few that I've knit, uh, probably four or five. Okay. I think we're at six. So that is a lot, but it's not enough. I need more. And I'm going to tell you all a little bit about my cardigans I've got planned for 2024. <laughs> First up is my sailor cardigan, which I need to finish by it's a little bit before the end of November. So I need to finish that up. And it is worked flat and it is seamed. Kendra from the Balance Skein, take note. I know you love your seamed garments. <laughs> um, so I'm going to, I'm gonna finish that up. And then I am wanting to also finish up my artisan cardigan, which I cast on and haven't really made a lot of progress with, but I have some good news. <laughs> I had been working from a PDF, which is totally fine, uh, but they, they sent that to me while I was waiting on my catalog to come in. And look what came in. I'm so excited. So I got this from Mother Knitter. Santa's garn patterns are a little bit hard to get <laughs> whenever you get the... Uh, Whenever you get the, the, you need to get a kit of yarn, basically, if you want the pattern book here in the U.S. I have been able to find the books in other countries without buying a yarn kit, 
but not so much here. So I got it from Mother Knitter and I got a kit for a different sweater in the book. So the kit I got was for the Abby sweater. Y'all, I love this. I love this so much. I got the Coast Yarn. I'm, I assume that's how you say it. K-O-S. And it's kind of like an Erin weight yarn, I believe. It's a blown yarn, but it's super fuzzy and super soft and yummy. And I, I'm not going to go get it right now. Well, I guess I will. I got this yarn in a kit for the Abby sweater and it is a Santa's yarn yarn of course it's the color 2543 and this is 62% baby alpaca 9% wool and 29% nylon so I am going to be making that sweater shortly well someday I'm going to make it someday <laughs> I don't think that that sweater would take very long to make because that's some pretty, you know, it's a thicker yarn and it just looks so cozy. I wanted to make it the second I saw it. So I've got that, but this cardigan right here is calling me. <laughs> I did cast it on and I need to get it finished pronto. And then some super exciting news is that Ashley from Design by So and So here on YouTube and Instagram and myself are co hosting a new knit along. <laughs> so, this is a knit along for the pressed flowers patterns, and it's called I Can Buy Myself Flowers Cow. <laughs> So I think it's going to be really fun. It's going to start November 1st and it's going to run through the end of January, 2024. So start November 1st, 2023, run through the end of January, 2024. And all you have to do is knit any of the pressed flowers patterns. So there's a shawl, there's a hat, there's a cowl, there's socks, there's a cardigan, and there's a pullover. Your options are endless. <laughs> um, whips are welcome. You also don't have to finish your project to enter the knit along. All you have to do is post it on Instagram, post a picture of it with the hashtag, I can buy myself flowers, K-A-L, and you can be eligible to win a prize. I'll just tell you, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> so, if you are like me and have been eyeing the pressed flowers things forever and need to make one, then you should knit along with me and Ashley. I have half of a pressed flower shawl I've never finished. So definitely gonna finish that shawl. <laughs> and then I saw so many cardigans, the pressed flowers cardigans at Rhinebeck and Woolen Folk, I about died. I needed it immediately. I even bought yarn at Rhinebeck to make a pressed flowers cardigan. So that is happening. I'm also gonna make a pressed flowers hat because I love it. And I'm very excited to get started on all of that. So Taji from Tangles and Starlight, she has talked me into spinning my own yarn <laughs> for the contrast color of my cardigan. And I've got quite a few skeins of hand spun that I've already done, but none of it is exactly what I want. So I've been going through and putting fibers together, trying to decide exactly what I want to use for my combo spin I'm gonna do. And I think I'm gonna use some fiber from Bonnie, who is the owner and dyer at Union Fiber Co. in New Zealand. She makes these super yummy, autumnal, moody colors. And I think it's gonna just, I think it's gonna look really good. So I'm probably gonna do, well, I was thinking about doing a three ply, but 
it definitely needs to be sport weight. So for me, I probably need to do a two ply. I think that will get me a lot closer to sport weight. If I do a three ply, it's probably gonna be worsted and that's not what I want for the cardigan. So uh, I think I'm gonna do a two ply and I'm just gonna probably tear up my fiber into smaller bits and kind of mix and match as I go and we'll see what I get. Speaking of spinning, I don't know if you watch Marlene Knits, but I love watching Marlene <laughs> here on YouTube. And she was talking about how she has just started spinning for the first time. She's been trying out a spinning wheel. So Marlene, maybe you need to spin for a pressed flowers hat or a cowl and, and knit along with us. <sighs> okay, y'all, I cannot even get into all the other things, projects that I've got. I think I'm going to do a frog at party because I started a lot of things in the last year. I did not even show y'all. I didn't even show you because I have too many. <laughs> and I, I just cast on spur of the moment, like, oh, I need this for this specific event or something like that. And then I changed my mind and I didn't finish it. So I think I'm going to rescue the yarn and frog quite a few projects that I've got. Is that something anybody would be interested in seeing all of the projects that I either need to finish or frog? <laughs> would that be boring or would that be interesting? Let me know if you'd like to see a video about when I go through my hoard of whips. Okay, this is my pressed flowers shawl progress, which <laughs> still has a lot to go. Um, this is in birch and lily yarn she actually did kits for this maybe last year ah that's how old this is help and it's so silly that i haven't finished it because it's amazing <laughs> i'm obsessed with the colors of this shawl y'all know green is what i live for <laughs> so i still have one skein of each that i have not caked up yet let me see this is my main color and it is on her DK base, and this is understory, also on her DK base. It's a little bit closer. Oh, look at that contrast color. I love it. Definitely like to finish that during the cow, and I hope that I will. So, I need to work on my pressed flower shawl and my sailor cardigan. Those are two very important things. And I also need to spin. I need to really get going on some spinning for my contrast color of my pressed flowers cardigan. <laughs> so I'm going to work on that for the next few days. Today's Saturday. So I'm going to work on that and I'm going to get back with y'all probably Tuesday and we'll see what kind of progress that I have made. <laughs> When I look at you, I see Georgia, I see sunshine headed my way.
Monday. I just got home. My youngest, I, or my, not my youngest, my oldest, I took to the dentist today because I thought that um, he was going to have one tooth pulled. So he is, he's very young, but it's obvious that he's going to have to get braces because of overcrowding and his teeth are just, you know, super fun right now. So I thought we were, we were gonna get one of his teeth pulled, but apparently he had to get nine of his teeth pulled because he had to get all of his baby teeth removed in hopes that his adult teeth will start to come in. <laughs> and if they won't, then, you know, he's gonna have the braces to try to make more room for those adult teeth to come in. Super fun. That was actually horrific, horrific morning. And uh, anyway, we just made it home. I am wearing my Hat and Peak hat by Maxim Sear, who I got to meet at Wool and Folk. I was super excited. And I woke up this morning. It was 33 degrees when I woke up, so I'm pretty sure it probably got down below freezing last night. I haven't checked yet, but that's new because earlier, well, a few days ago, it was 80 something degrees. It was in the mid eighties. <laughs> so apparently it's decided to get cold, which I am very much okay with that, but I still had wet hair. I did not even have time to put on makeup because they called me this morning and said, you need to be here an hour earlier <laughs> than we thought. And it's been a fun morning. I stopped and got him some soup and I got myself some sushi. It was needed. <laughs> uh, I did get to work a little bit on some of my stuff the last few days. I've been working on my pressed flower shawl and I've been working on my test knit sailor cardigan. So I'm gonna show y'all that later, but sushi first. <laughs> Hey y'all, it is Monday afternoon still and I finished my sushi. So I thought I would show y'all what I have gotten done in the last few days. So I um, have finally got to start working more on my Sailor Cardigan test knit. And this is using Camilla, Camellia Fiber Co, which I absolutely love. This is their uh, merino worsted organic non-superwash base and if you remember I was a little bit nervous that these two colors were too close to the same and not enough contrast which I'm a huge lover of low contrast but I was like oh no is this too low contrast <laughs> anyway I cast on the back and I have worked this much so far and I actually really love it. I think it's just enough contrast and it's the really earthy tones, which I love, I'm all about. They're very much my style. This is so squishy. The yarn is extremely around, lovely yarn that I think would be great for cables. It's got excellent stitch definition and it has a really nice tonal quality to it. So I am, um, let me hold it closer. I, I am very, very happy with this. And um, so far I've just cast on the back panel and I knit this in two evenings. But I also was working on my pressed flower shawl. So I got this much done. And I actually kind of like working a seamed cardigan every now and again. If it's bottom down, I almost prefer it to be seamed. Not always. But uh, sometimes I do like a bottom up. Okay, what did I just say a minute ago? 
I don't like working seamed cardigans if they're top down. If they're top down, I want it to be all in one piece. <laughs> if it's bottom up, I don't mind working it as a seamed piece because it almost seems like it goes a little bit faster. This is my back panel and then I will make both of the front panels and since it's smaller, it kind of feels like you make faster progress. You know, it's just a piece of it so it goes a little bit faster and um, I do enjoy that sometimes. So I am loving working on this so far and I am very pleased with my colors. I think that it will be something that I will wear a lot and I'm very happy with how those go together. Okay. Next up, my pressed flower shawl. I'll show you what kind of progress I made. So one repeat of the chart is two rows of flowers. Let me see. So two, two rows of flowers. And you work that chart four times total, and then you do the border. So I have done three full repeats of the chart. And in the last, in one evening, I was able to do half of my final repeat of the chart. Each repeat gets longer because you are, you know, adding more and more stitches every row. That's okay. I'm still enjoying it. I, I definitely haven't worked on it in a while, so I was excited to get this back out. And I could, in one evening, I could definitely finish the other half of my last chart repeat before starting the border. The border looks a little intense because <laughs> they got a lot more flowers in it. So I'll probably have to pay attention more closely. So I'm gonna keep working on that and I have some exciting news. If y'all want to join the Pressed Flowers Cal, which is called I Can Buy Myself Flowers Cal, that I'm hosting with Ashley from Design by So-and-So. I talked to Amy Christoffers, who is the de designer, Savory Knitting, and she designed all of the pressed flowers patterns. So she said that from yesterday, which was October 29th, through November 8th, you can use the code YOUNGFOLK and get 15% off any of the pressed flowers patterns. So I was super excited. That means that even if you don't want to participate in the cow, but you want to, you know, you want to make these patterns in future, um, feel free to use that code and stock up on your, on your patterns. I already have the shawl pattern, but I am going to get the hat pattern and the cardigan pattern. So I'm very excited and I'm excited to get to, <laughs> to use that code. That was very sweet of Amy. So I wanted to mention that. And I think the only thing left I really want to accomplish in the next few days is to definitely get some more work done on my spinning because I really, really, really want to spin for my pressed flowers cardigan. And I know myself, I will kind of let other things get in the way. So I need to get busy on that. <music> That I can't seem to find When I go to reach it Just leaves my mind Waking with a note How could a poem hold See you. 
get to spend a little bit of time spinning and knitting yesterday. I got to work on the back panel of my sailor cardigan <laughs> test knit and I'm really enjoying working with this squishy yarn. So I am going to definitely work on this for the next few days. I've got to start another test knit as well and I want to get as much done on this as possible before I cast that one on. But I wanted to show y'all what I think I have decided on the current braid that I have been spinning. So this is what I have been working on and it is a club color from Hello Yarn uh, back from like March and I love it. It is extremely moody and it has some lovely dark tones in it. It's dyed on a gray merino base. So it gives it just this extraordinarily moody, lovely, deep colors and I love it. But I am I kind of want to extend it a little bit and I think that after seeing a few different people's um, combo spins where they used a dark color like this, I was talking to Sam Fusco. She was showing me a picture of some stuff she did and I think that I'm going to grab this. Um, this was a club color from Nest Fiber that I, I did last year. And honestly, this is not a color combo that I would knit with or that I would usually choose to spin with. It's very cotton candy like and absolutely not like me at all. <laughs> so I have quite a few of these top things that I have built up from the club colors and I just have never used them but I think that if I spin this up in a combo spin along with this that it's gonna actually look fairly well because there's a lot of similar colors like this blue lavender color um, I think that it will, I think it will blend all right and sort of tone down the darkness of this, but this will, um, sort of mute the, the brightness <laughs> of this as well. So I think that that will work out all right. I've spun exactly half of this braid, so I'm going to go ahead and spin the rest of it on the same bobbin. Then I'm just going to spin this up and... I'm going to plot them together. And the way I do that is I'm literally just gonna split this down the middle and I will, um, I will just spin it end to end on a one bobbin as well. And then I will ply those two yarns together and make a two ply. And I think that that would be really nice to use in a shawl. And I love knitting shawls. Uh, especially uh, this would be, I think this would look really pretty in one of the textured shawls. Like Andrea Mowry has a lot of brioche and ribbed shawls. Um, not just her, I mean, there's so many that you can find. So I think I'll probably look for one of those and try to use this in it. Um, even in a fun, squishy half fisherman's rib cowl, I think that this top yarn will look well and work well in that type of pattern. Thank you so much to everyone who entered the giveaway for the Knitting for Olive book. The Knitting for Olive book I showed was kindly gifted to me by Knitting for Olive itself, but this giveaway is kindly sponsored by Penguin Random House Publishing. So they will be sending the winner a copy of the new Knitting for Olive book. I am going to put the winner on the screen so congratulations. If you will, please email me at youngfolk.knits at gmail.com or you can send me a direct message on Instagram. Know that I will not be reaching out to anyone or replying to comments letting you know that you have won. If that happens, it is a spammer. So please do not engage with them. Instead, please just report it. Never give anyone any of your information. I will not ask you for money ever so please be wary of that sad situation on YouTube.
All right, thank y'all so much for hanging out with me today. If you enjoy videos like this, then please make sure and give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. That way you won't miss out on any new video content and it also really helps my channel out tremendously. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Thank you for being here. And until next time, happy knitting y'all.